Healthy Rebel Radio is sponsored by the Healthy Rebel app. 300 plus secretly healthy, delicious, mouth-watering dessert and treat recipes made with all natural whole food ingredients. Now available for download on the App Store and Google Play. Find out more details at HealthyRebel.com. Welcome to Healthy Rebel Radio. I'm your host, Dr. David Dizer, and I'm here with my Damien Health Healthy Rebel co-founder, Amy Lane. Good morning. Good morning. Let's start with some really good news today. Okay. Uh, I, I don't think you've seen this yet. Um, Hong Kong, is, which is the major, the the one of the largest um, industries for ivory trade, has said that they're canceling all ivory trade ivory trade today. Oh, that's so great. It's going to be over. Wow. So this is coming just a few weeks after the largest um, circus in in the world has been uh, said they're going to retire all their elephants, which it was planned for 2018 or something, but it's going to be happening much quicker. Wow. So um, this is all coming on, on the backs of, this is from Upworthy, of course, one of the only places where it's sharing positive news mm-hmm. nowadays. Um, but uh, the... You know, elephants are going extinct. We know that if, if things continue the way they're going, 100,000 elephants have, were killed in the last three years. Oh. Um, in, in one generation, or in one decade, I, I believe was the stat, elephants would be extinct. Um, so Hong Kong was still allowing ivory trade uh, for things that were made before 1989 or something was the rule. But people were sneaking in because it was a simple rule to get around. Anyways, all ivory trade is going to be ended now in Hong Kong. That's great. It's really great. Yeah, it's really exciting. It's a really great start. Mm-hmm. So I wanted to make sure we shared that. So, with the circus that you mentioned, mm-hmm. are they just retiring elephants? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we're just starting with elephants. Right. I wish that all um, animals used for entertainment would become illegal. I agree. Yeah, that would be incredible. You know, and then we could, you know, pour money and funding into, um, this is Bridget complaining. She had a hard sleep last night. Um, It's okay, Bridge. It's okay, baby. Um, then we could all pay money to go to these places, maybe and visit, um, you know, like those in California that rescue center for elephants absolutely where they, that's where they it should live, change to that where they yeah. live on land and it, you'd go on kind of like a safari and just see them from a distance mm-hmm. I feel like that would be and then all the money goes back to those animals definitely you know cleaning up the mess we've created bringing mm-hmm. these animals here well I really want to go to the, the wolf sanctuary oh, yeah. uh, George R. R. Martin me too I, I, I want to see that Is it is it a helicopter tour I think something like that you or helico- did we read that he was taking people on helicopter? Yeah, course? it was a prize you could win that he you get to go with him on the helicopter to his wolf sanctuary. See, Amy knows all this because she's obsessed with Game of Thrones and George R. R. Martin. And also George R. R. Martin. I'm obsessed with him. And it turns out you're a, a Ned Stark stalker. Yeah, I yeah. did. I, I stalk him. You found I can him find him in anything he's in. Oh, yeah. I still think about him about one, once a week, I think... Oh, so okay. Ned Wait a second, though. You said once a day. The, when you said this the other day, she said, "You know what? I still think of Ned Stark once a day." I do. Oh. Spoiler alert for anyone that hasn't seen Game of Thrones <laughs> season one. <laughs> season one, episode one. <laughs> I'm still upset. I don't know how they made me fall in love with him within the first episode, but they did. It's the writing. I love him so much. So good. Oh. So l- let's move on to some, some medical news, health and wellness stuff. Sounds good. Uh, you know, where I spend my mornings here, the Journal of Obesity mm. um, is reporting that dietary fat restriction increases fat taste sensitivity in people with obesity. That's the title of the article. Now, I think the article is important because um, it brings up the debate. If you if you have better taste receptors for fat, does not mean you eat? Does that mean you eat less fat? What do you think? I don't know what this means. Thank so, like, you know how when you avoid sugar for a really long time. Yes. Then all of a sudden you you don't like things that are too sweet. Yes. Well, 
is it similar with fat and would that restrict someone's because that does restrict your uh, amount of sugar you eat we know that okay so um, they're saying if you avoid fat for a really long time mm -hmm. you no longer enjoy the taste of fat not that you don't enjoy it but you taste it uh in, in a more intense way like you would with sugar that's totally true I, I would say yeah so that was the study they found out that was true now the debate is does that mean you eat less fat and there's different ideas there's there's conflicting evidence there's in the in this study they're referencing four articles two that say that does restrict your intake of fat and two that says it doesn't mm -hmm. um but what they found was they studied about 60 people they put them in different groups one was on a low calorie diet one was on a low fat diet they both they both the groups lost the exact same amount of weight mm -hmm. the people who ate low fat their fat uh their taste buds for fat became higher highly uh highly oh my gosh they became more receptive. Heightened. Heightened, absolutely. So um, they could taste fat in a... Yeah, I mean, I think anybody that has gone from uh, processed high sugar or processed high fat or just high processed diet to a more uh, natural basic eating, mm -hmm. I think we all can say, of course, that's true. Yeah. With myself, you know, I, I literally can't eat too much fat or it feels greasy or fatty or I start to feel like my skin is oily or I feel that sluggish feeling. Yeah, you do. And you mentioned that. I mean, I, I think I feel that too when I think about the the different oils and, and changing your changing my diet specifically. Oh, for, you totally do. You're just not as verbal as me about it. Yeah, but, but and I think it does change the, like, I would have to say from my perspective, it changes the way you eat. Oh, a hundred percent it does. And you know, and again, I think most people can relate to this with sugar. Now, mm -hmm. there's, I can't consume refined sugar even if I tried. Mm -hmm. It just, I can't. No. It doesn't taste right. It doesn't taste good. It feels almost like a drug. It just hits your bloodstream way too quick. It just, right. it's a, and it's not good. We, and you've experienced this. Um, David is a secret chocoholic. Oh, yeah. Loves chocolate. Dark, dark chocolate. Right, but this is what I'm saying. Back in the day, you would just go get cheap bulk chocolate and mow down. And now, you're like a chocolate snob. Mm -hmm. You oh, know? Yeah. You only like 85% dark chocolate, you know, organic, blah, 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 fair trade. So you can relate to that for mm -hmm. sure. Definitely. Yeah. Now, so do you think it's beneficial to restrict fat in this way to change your taste buds do you think that's going to be a positive thing i mean i don't or know it doesn't it doesn't even matter i think it's just more about eating a healthy balanced diet and the fats that you choose yes end of story and i think that you learn how to once you get going you learn how to regulate those fats i remember when i first started and i've talked about this before eating really really healthy i still had um uh, like an overeaters or emotional eater, you know, uh, mind frame. It was still there. I was still working through that. I was healing that. So I would I would go to peanut butter and just eat spoonfuls of peanut butter. Mm -hmm. So I was still I would that's abusing fat. That is right. And then when I moved when I stopped kind of eating peanut butter and put went more to almond butter, I would do the same with almond butter. Mm -hmm. But I but the fats I was choosing were still you know, under the umbrella of healthy fats, mm -hmm. you know, but yeah, it's different. I think it's more about choosing first, just deciding you're only going to consume healthy fats. And then if you are an overeater or you do have emotional eating issues, just working on balancing that out. I think, you're, yeah, it's funny you bring up healthy fats because the more I think about it, the more I think that when you eat healthy fats, your body starts to regulate itself. Like One. you can't really eat too much avocado. Your body stops consuming well it. we're at that place now mm. but back in the day i wasn't in that place no deep fried foods for or anything like i i could abuse guacamole if i really wanted to right. you know but you will regulate and it's about i really truly believe it's about getting no matter fighting through that first part and getting enough vegetables into your diet mm -hmm. you know having at least two cups of vegetables with lunch and with supper yeah. And also incorporating, a, a, you know, vegetables into one snack a day or fruit or, you know, getting as much of that fiber and nutrients into your system as possible. And then you're not feeling like you're lacking nutrients. You know, a lot of people go on healthy eating plans and they just 
cut their portions down tiny. Mm -hmm. You know? Trying to regulate themselves that way. And your body's going to crave something. And if your body's craving something, it's either going to go, let's get our best bang for our buck, let's go sugar or fat. Oh, right away. And that's where you get in trouble. Definitely. Right? And the other thing with fat, a lot of the time, you can also, you know, bind yourself up. Oh, you can. If you consume too much fat. And you can get, I, I, you know, the effects on your skin. I don't care what anyone says, it happens. Mm -hmm. You know, and you feel greasy and it doesn't feel good. You don't feel energized and... So it's all about that learning process. But, you know, if you're starting out eating healthy and you are consuming too much fat, don't beat yourself up. Just recognize it Mm -hmm. and then work on making those solutions. So for me, I had to take peanut butter out of my house. Yeah, I was going to say, I haven't seen you have peanut butter in years. Well, now I just don't really want it. Mm -hmm. But back then, it wasn't about... That's how you did things. Right, because I knew I couldn't control myself around that one thing. Well, and you're such a good quitter. I'm a great quitter. But that's out of the desire to feel good. Mm. Right? And out of the deep respect for this container I've been given. And I don't want to spend my lifetime obsessing about my container. I have more things to do. So I just do the hard stuff right away that needs to be done. And one of the best things I've found is just if something is out of my control, I just take it out of my house until I'm in control. We have peanut butter right now in the fridge. Yeah. But I just don't think about it anymore. I suppose. I think that's something that you've... It's been kind of funny for me to watch because you've became you know developed this pride around being able to quit things that are unhealthy mm-hmm. i do and I love it, it contributes to your to your life in such a positive way right but that's something that i used as a tool to build because i love being rebellious mm. so the fact that i think it's hilarious that I, I would just tell myself i'm great at quitting things yeah i'm so good at quitting things and then now it's really true i have quit so many things it's weird (laughs) like i am great at it yeah right for sure most people don't don't think about that they think about if i'm going to quit something it's always negative but you can really use that in a positive way right and i think that's part of being rebellious learn what works for you Mm -hmm. you know i think it's fun and funny and entertaining and rebellious to and it i just think it's a really different take on something to be great at quitting things (laughs) definitely so i like it I like it too. Yeah, and I use it. Yeah. So in, in talking about this this fat intake, the I was just searching through some stuff right before we started, and, and there was a paper released this morning from the Journal of Cell Metabolism saying that calorie for calorie dietary fat restriction results in more body fat body fat loss than carbohydrate restriction in people with obesity. Um, so they're doing a cellular study, but it was only on 19 people. I don't. Yeah, that's not a big enough study. So someone with someone with obesity, they're saying if you restrict fat more than carbohydrates, you're going to lose fat quicker based on how your metabolism reacts. But it's also because for every, what, gram of fat, there's nine, nine calories. Yeah. yeah. And then it ca- carbohydrates, well, it's seven or five, or five or seven. Yeah. So that's also kind of logical if you're eating obscene amounts of food. Mm-hmm. Right. I mean, we, we, we don't recommend having fat every meal either. I mean, we, we're focused on having fat in the evenings and only healthy fats. And and, and small amounts of uh, fats trickle their way into our eating plan through snacks and through things like flax seeds, hemp seeds. Um, and then some of our snacks contain nuts or seeds, um, you know, uh, hummus with Definitely, olive yeah. oil, that type of thing. And we say, you know, certain amounts for cooking is fine. But we only suggest adding, consciously adding a... Uh, serving a fat to supper and that ends up balancing things appropriately and I always put that fat at the end of the day because I do believe that it helps you know the mind relax the body relax and it helps with sleep Mm -hmm. but again it's it's at a proper portion oh yeah and it's a proper choice you can overdo it so quickly and a proper choice yeah oh it's easy you know to overdo fat especially with nuts and things like that oh yeah definitely Let's shift gears here into something hot, much more controversial than these, these fat studies. <laughs> you restrict fat, you know, you'll you'll taste it more. The taste buds will be increased. Okay, whatever. Okay. Let's talk about cell phones. What? Because, I mean, New York Times did a big piece yesterday about um, the CDC recommendations that were released 18 months ago that said cell phones pose a risk uh, to people. It's that it was that there's a there's a, a precautionary risk that we should all know about with cell phones. What kind of risk? Um, 
we're talking about the it's non ionizing non iodizing radiation that's released from the cell phones, but they're they're saying that we should restrict our use and they don't give any more detail. Then a few months later, they retract the statement, saying don't worry about it. Mm. And so the New York Times is digs right into it and says what what the heck is going on here at the CDC? What are the recommendations? And the the scary thing is this: the experts can't agree on whether cell phones are dangerous or not. We know that since these guidelines were, they, be, they began to put them together in 2010, um, we started using cell phones a lot more. Now, it's not like we're using them a lot more in terms of talking. We're using them a lot, a lot more in terms of gaming and things like that. Um, and social media. And social media, exactly. Social and gaming. So... We are using them more since they started doing these guidelines, but you know what actually happened during that time? What are the precautions? Um, so the CDC couldn't give them any any good answers about what to do. In fact, since the the recommendations have been pulled, some of the top people at the CDC have actually quit, um, who were involved in making those recommendations. So it's high, big big time scandal. This is not conspiracy. This is actually happening. I'll, I'll put the link in the show notes. Mm. Um, this is from it looks like. January 2nd, NewYorkTimes.com. Um, so they go to Europe. Say, so what are the recommendations in Europe? And the recommendations in Europe, and I believe they're similar in Canada, says we should be restricting cell phone use in kids um, because of potential side effects. Now, they won't say what the side effects are, but we're obviously concerned about brain cancer. Why won't they say? Because the research isn't good. Um, either way, it's difficult to do these studies because... Oh, I mean, there's many reasons why it's difficult to do, but um, we just don't know what the effects are. So I want to read a quote. I mean, I'm sure you have lots to say about this, but the the European agency, uh, the the person who's doing the studies and who's giving the um, the recommendations is named Dr. Cardis. Dr. Cardis is now conducting a large government-funded study in Europe of the potential risks of cell phone use amongst children. Nevertheless, she uses a mobile phone herself, as do her children, though she said it was prudent to use headsets or speakerphone or to text instead of holding the device next to your ear. If there's a risk, it's likely to be greater for exposure at younger ages, she said, simply because the skull is thinner and the ears are thinner in children than in adults. Basically, your phone is closer to your brain. Okay, sure. Mm. It's kind of scary. I mean, we, we really just don't know. Uh, but the reason I want to bring this up is because you've been on this for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> and I believe it was you who said to me something about, you know, I need a headset and all this stuff. It's freaking me out. Well, yeah, that's why you bought me that. Mm-hmm. The, the receiver. I just know for myself that if I'm spending too much time with my phone, I feel, I don't feel well. Mm-hmm. So is that, you know mental emotional because that just means I'm working way more and obviously that takes energy and I'm probably not filling myself up or is there something really going on I can't say but Mm -hmm. here's two things with my own self that I it's a fact and no one can change my mind when I limit my exposure to wi-fi and cell phones you know my new rule is that like I don't work past 8 p.m and that's been really working for me but Mm -hmm. I also shut the office and and we now that we live in a cement building Mm -hmm. it's really interesting because we don't have wi-fi in our bedroom it just isn't there it's a dead zone so since having that my sleep is better I'm less anxious I don't get that feeling in my head of congestion which I used to say to Dave that I, I've been around Wi-Fi too much my my head feels fuzzy and my poor husband just understands my lingo so well he knows what I mean but the, no one can convince me it's not a thing that, what, that usually means let's go to a cabin yeah and that's usually when I'm like we need to book a cat when I say to Dave the Wi-Fi is making me sick <laughs> this is our code for it's time to go to a cabin for a weekend mm-hmm. and that's why we spend time in cabins because I believe in it I believe you know getting away from you know wi-fi media just you know people pulling at your can get a hold of you at any time of day i think that sometimes we have to go away but yeah i totally believe this i mean it makes me kind of nauseous when i see women i saw a woman breastfeeding one day and she had the cell phone basically sitting on her baby's head while she was online Mm -hmm. and just intrinsically i just thought 
oh god that baby's head yeah I mean, there is Wi-Fi coming from somewhere, and it's going to this device. Yes. So just because we visually can't see it Mm -hmm. doesn't mean that it doesn't exist. It is happening. It's just a question, is that affecting this baby's head or not? So for me, I'd say yes. Until I know different. Until you know different, yeah. You know, it's not a conspiracy. It's a fact that that, that, that your device is drawing signals. Mm Mm-hmm. Well, and we know that that ionizing radiation from nuclear Mm -hmm. changes DNA and and kills people. Right. But non-ionizing radiation, what does that do? We need to figure this out because our exposure is just getting bigger and bigger. 3G, Wi-Fi, cell Mm -hmm. phones. I mean, it's everything. Did they ever come out with the fact of why when men use laptops on their laps, is it the heat or was it something else do they know that reduces their sperm count? I, I hate to say, but it's still being debated. Okay, so these. this is what I'm saying. If these things are coming to light, I just say, like, for myself, like, don't put your cell phone in your pocket near any of your privates. Mm-hmm. Don't use your cell phone near your baby, your baby's skull. You know, don't put it in your breast pocket and use it on speakerphone or like I have, I bought that. It's like a real old school receiver that plugs into my, my cell phone. Yeah, and they're and, they're available and, on Amazon all over the place. And like I said, never bring my my rule and just for peace of life, it will change your life if you stop bringing your cell phone or your devices into your bedroom. Mm-hmm. Your quality of sleep will be so much better. Definitely, absolutely. I mean, if you and if and on that note, if you're interested in reading the debate about what's going on at the CDC, check out this article because it goes through the quotes from all the different people who are involved. It's strange because I've read a couple now that you just had this up and right at the beginning it was a very firm quote that we mm-hmm. should be limiting our use. End of story. Definitely. And then and then you have Dr. Porter here who left the CDC in 2013, which was a few months after it was released. Uh, I, w- I would have been happy with the original revision. Mm. Um, so yeah. It's hard to say because they're they're using science that they're not happy with and then they're saying that the the revisions were made without industry um, with without industry uh, input which is hard to believe considering they were changed so quickly after the, the release but um, you know you have to watch this stuff for sure and I think it's like most things in life like I think we have to bring it back to our common sense mm-hmm. and just yeah that's what you're saying intrinsically it just doesn't make sense to do that no for you I mean but this is what I try and teach my patients. Mm. There's there's so much value in just being in tune with with what's going on with you. And teach your parent, teach your your patients, but also we're trying to teach ourselves at the same time. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> you know, to be more aligned. But oh my gosh, I mean, I, I'm I'm always trying to be more aligned, and I, I aspire to be to be like you. But it's oh, okay. It's it's something that I, I I also try and teach because people will say people say to me sometimes about how they're in tune with certain things, and I. And I'm just, you know, I praise that because I, it, it's so helpful for treatments. Because you can easily track things and, and see how they're working. Because we're not just using lab numbers and things like that. I just think that there is such a shift. And I just want everybody to come back to the basics of knowing. Like, when it feels wrong, <laughs> you know. Yeah, it's probably you wrong. Know? Yeah. yeah, and limit that. Like, get back to the truth of what it feels like for you. And it's not about being paranoid or, you know being worried or being stressed because I'm telling you being stressed about something is often worse than the thing Mm -hmm. we talk about this all the time as well you know if if you're just gonna run around paranoid now about Mm wi-fi then the actual stress is going to be worse than the wi-fi oh yeah stress is the stress is number one killer Mm -hmm. so that's a good point yeah don't don't be scared of the wi-fi don't be scared of anything just you know, be an adult mm-hmm. and make adult choices and limit and work with your own life. You know what you could do better. We all do, you yeah. know, if we if we look at our lives. Like, we, and it's not about being perfect either. And I don't ever want to portray that we're just, you know, perfect and living this perfect life. We're just constantly trying to refine and trying to find those solutions and live this healthy, balanced life and share everything that works. And everything that doesn't work. And everything that doesn't work. And we've been blessed with the cement walls at this point. <laughs> yeah. Now, there is, there is other ways around it. We should we should conclude with that probably. Yeah. You, you know, you can put your phone on airplane mode so 3G and Wi-Fi won't hit it. Right. Um, you can also turn your Wi-Fi off depending on the router you have. Right. Um, airplane mode, that's a great tip. Airplane mode is 
excellent because mm-hmm. then no, you know that no signals are coming in. Right. Um, so if your phone is near you and you want a break, you can do that and you can right. you can know safely. And you can still use there. it for photos if you want. Definitely. Or, and you can still um, write notes and do mm-hmm. that kind of stuff. And and many people are restricting their 3G use anyways because they don't want the big bills that come. They come yeah. with it. So it, they'll put their phone, you know, turn 3G off as an option on, on iPhones and Samsung. Mm-hmm. Samsung. Um, so you can do that so you only get Wi-Fi. And then you know you're not getting the surrounding signals. Yeah, definitely. There's lots of tools out there. Mm. That's Healthy Rebel Radio, episode 13. Thank you so much for listening. Have a great day. See you. Healthy Rebel Radio is presented by the online health and wellness center, DamiHealth.com. Since 2009, Amy Lane has successfully coached thousands of women through her signature program, the Bikini Body Program. Join today to work exclusively with Amy to unveil your greatest yet to be from the inside out. Go to DamiHealth.com for more information. Thank you for listening to Healthy Rebel Radio. Please connect with us on our community pages on Facebook, Pinterest, and Instagram, all at the handle at DamiHealth. For weekly recipes, articles, and all our episodes straight to your inbox, join our newsletter at DamieHealth.com. You can find all the links discussed in today's episode in the show notes. Thank you for joining us and see you tomorrow.